Yo, what up? This your boy Wiz Gam. This your girl Miss Belargo. This your boy King Jones eighty, and we got a special guest in here, and this brother is going to teach us today. This is like a very informative uh, episode, a certified talk. Yes, we we uh, we do a lot of joking. Yeah, but, but this today is today we're going to get serious. Yeah. We still want to joke too, though. We got we got a very 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 special guest in here. He's going to teach us about gun laws. He's going to teach us how to use the guns, and he's also going to teach us. On how to uh, obtain a gun. Yes. Well, today, we, yes. today we reached 500 murders in the city. Yeah. Yes. Sad. So, our guest going to tell us, you know, the importance of owning a gun and how to actually use the gun, a legal gun, to protect legal. yourself. Yeah. And legally. We, we also reached a record number of uh, females being murdered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a big reason for me personally why I chose. To finally become licensed to carry, even after being a business owner for 17 years, I was always, I always had mis, mixed feelings about owning a gun. But mm. now, more than ever, I feel like I have to have a gun. Yeah. Because shit get real. It do. Real fast. Super now, I'm not trying real. to be 501. Super <laughs> real. Look at this guy right, over here. Let's bring, let's bring, let's bring, let's bring, uh, Fuck, you want to introduce our guest? Yes. Introduce my big cuz, Razak, in the building. He going to give it to y'all straight raw from the hip. Hello, everyone. I'd like to thank you guys for having me. Uh, my name is Richard Oliver, known as Abdul Razak. Uh, I own an armed security company here in the city for about 17 years. It's called the Parapet Group. Mm. We specialize in doing all types of armed security, unarmed security, uh, Bars, nightclubs, celebrity protection. Uh, I've been with Jamie Foxx, Idris Alba, Nicki Minaj. We've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, we do charter schools, construction sites, nursing homes, Damn. bars, wow. clubs. So That's all those, so all those places like nursing homes, they, they need armed security. It's armed and unarmed. So some of the nursing homes have unarmed, but you wouldn't believe that sometimes when the old people get evicted. We're contracted to have armed security those wow. days. The families come up and act a fool. Oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, oh, we're at five nursing homes around the city. I don't want to name them, but we're all over the they place. The wild, and business is good. Wow. And it's been good since the pandemic, and it's been good since the social unrest behind black folks getting killed in the wow. rioting. So the last couple of years, starting with the George Floyd, we're all over the place. Wow. And so we're very busy. Speaking of the social unrest, and before we get deep into the, well, even around that, we can talk about that today. The verdict uh, finally came out for <clears throat> the Ahmaud Aubrey case, and yes. all three killers were convicted. Yes. So yeah. finally some justice, because yeah, Kyle goes. Rittenhouse felt like a slap in the face. So so when, when the, uh, I don't even, I hate calling the, the Central Park Five, I hate calling them that. So when those little boys was crying on uh, on the stand, and yeah. they got convicted yep. of uh, rape. rape or whatever, and they crying on the stand, nobody was sympathetic to them. Yeah. No right. one was sympathetic to them. So the, th this is this that was white privilege at its best, and I right. hate even using that term and saying no, it. No, it is what it is. Because people people think white privilege doesn't exist, but when those five innocent boys went to jail and had to like go through what they went through. Yes. And this dude brought a gun to the right, to the uh, thing, to shoot somebody. Out of his house from another And s actually said days before, I'm going to shoot somebody. Body. Like well, weeks, months that. before. Yeah, he said yeah. that. He still wasn't. So it was premeditated already. Like you already know, like I'm going down there. He was I'm protected. Kill so in that case, and, and maybe you can educate us, because they're trying to say it was loopholes of gun laws that, that, that got him off. Is that true? Well, it, there wasn't loopholes that got him off. You know, he had a jewelry, and you see the jewelry was almost all, all white. white. Yeah. And then it uh, only had one black person, I think, on that particular jewelry. They struck everybody, all the potential black jurors. They struck every last one of wow. them except for one. Wow. So that made up his jewelry. The other thing that uh, happens is that we're looking for something as far as justice and is unjust here. So we know how many of our family, friends, or whatever go to jail unjust. And I think that the notion in America is that when we cry foul, that they think we're anti-justice. No, we're just as 
much for justice as everyone else, but it's not fair. There are two justice systems in America, mm -hmm. one for black people and one for white. Right. So when we complain, it's not like we're saying we're anti-police and we're anti-justice. Yeah. We want someone who breaks in our house and rob us and shoot our loved ones. We want we them to go to jail. Once. Fairness. We just want fairness. And yeah. there are two there's two systems and they're unequal and they're not just. So wow. that's, that's what needs to be understood first. And then the other thing is, uh, things are, uh, I think sometimes our black people and what we call black leaders are focused on the wrong thing, right? Yeah. So we're focused on the wrong I thing. I agree. So what happens is you have this guy and his mom and whatever, she drives him and this, that, and the other. She drives him from one state to another with a gun that he shouldn't even be able to have and this, that, and the other. And she gets in no trouble for that. You know, she doesn't get arrested mm -hmm. for that. But a black woman will get arrested and go to prison for trying to send her kid to a better elementary school. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we aren't up in war about that. So I think sometimes the things that we protest and the way we protest is out of whack and it's not proportionally right to get us the right answers. So we're protesting with no results. Right. You know, so you have to understand sometimes with these protests, they're against us, but we don't start it. Sometimes we don't even get offended until other liberal white people say, hey, that's not right, and let's go protest. Right. Yeah. right? So sometimes we should always be on edge, always on anger, always on tilt, right. until we get some changes, but that's not the case. Yeah. And then we'll take some of the protests, and some people will loot, but that has nothing to do with what the majority are doing. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen in the Kyle Richards, some of the looters and the agitators were white people, uh, like we always say. Right. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? Right. So I didn't listen to everything about his case. You know what I mean? But they, he didn't get off from loopholes. He got off because the jury of his peers mm -hmm. yeah. and the sentiment, and there's an anti-rioting sentiment and an anti-whatever, and he had the right jury. He had the right racist judge, mm. and he had everything in the system, and, and, and it worked out that, for him. That Rittenhouse name probably helped, too. Mm -hmm. Well, you you say the Rittenhouse name it has nothing to do with that. You, you, we have to take into consideration that when he got arrested after the murders, they raised... Two million dollars for yeah. him. Right, right. Two million. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't get we don't raise any money for our people and then they go to jail and then 30, 40 years later we like they innocent. Also, we gotta right. start to me, we gotta start doing a little bit better. <clears throat> because uh look with who with who we elect and put in position. Because Ooh. we let the Democrats trick us I every feel like, I year. Feel, I feel really good. Every year they trick the, they trick us and it's like right. like what are you doing for the black agenda? They have an agenda for everyone else. As soon as the Asians get in trouble, or something happened with the Asians, you see what went on? Oh, stop Asian hate. But black people been suffering and getting hated on and murdered and violated for yeah. centuries now. Forever. Centuries now, but we ain't allowed to uh, get mad. We ain't allowed to cry out. We ain't allowed. So when we get upset, that's why I don't feel no type of way when it's riots and they start burning shit down. I'm going to be honest. Burn this motherfucker down for all I care. <laughs> That's how I be thinking. Burn but this just don't tear, down. just don't tear our shit up. Just that, don't tear that, our stuff that up. That was the biggest thing. Don't that, tear our stuff up. Understand. But sometimes, like you, you can't expect the lid to stay on the boiling pot, and Sorry, for the pot not to erupt. Absolutely, it's gonna erupt eventually. Talk your stuff with. It's gonna erupt eventually. Like you can't keep the oppressed oppressed. Like something's bound to happen. Like it's yeah. something's gonna happen here. Like. It's like it's like they keep smacking us in our face with this stuff, and then when we want, we want like now now that we uh, getting into this gun thing. Hey, listen, Wiz. How do you feel about that situation with uh? It was supposedly an Uber driver. Oh yeah. And they tried to rob him, and he tore their ass up. He had a switch or something, and gave it to him. Yeah, one one. Did he I kill think it's two justified. or one? I thought two. I thought the second yeah, one died. The second killed, person yeah, did die. Yeah, two I, only I, one survived. I hate to person. say it that way. No, that that is but justified. I think it's justified. Like I mean, it's definitely justified. But I, me personally, I don't think that was just no average yeah, Uber but, driver. I had my own, I had my own incident, right? I ain't gonna get into what my incident was. But had I had a gun and I was licensed to carry, I probably would have tore their asses up too. As you should. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. As you should. Like people need to stop doing things and not expecting consequences to happen. Now, I bet those people uh, who, rest in peace to the deceased or whatever, no, I, I, I don't want anyone to die, right? Right. But now I bet those people are like, my baby wouldn't do that. 
My right. baby ain't into that, but she don't know what your baby into. Right. Mm -hmm. Your that, baby out here kicking up dust. That boy was screaming for his mama, too. Yep. Yeah, I bet he was. He was. You heard him. I bet the hell. Yeah, like, oh, oh. Hey, shopping, huh? yeah. yeah, but you want to think about that when you're trying to rob that man. Right. Yeah. But that's still, about still that. a sad situation all around. Yeah, it is. Man. It is definitely What's a sad the sad situation? situation? I'm not understanding. I mean, because of, of his family has to deal with the hardship, but still they lost their loved one. You know, as a, a juvenile, as a youth, we all did dumb shit, made mistakes. We all thought that was the way, because of the rap music or whatever have you, we all thought, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, you know I mean, I'm a robber. I'm gonna get a jux, this, that, the other, because we think it's decent or what have you, or no. We always think there's no consequences to the shit, Not to me. our actions. I always thought it was consequences to everything I've ever gotten into. But what my cousin told me, Seppi, he told me, never rob a motherfucker, and don't, and, and, and not be prepared for what's coming with it. Cause something's coming with it. Something <laughs> gonna come with it. Something's definitely coming so with you it. You gotta stand. You you gonna have to stand your ground for real on that case. Oh no, it's coming. It's coming. I I mean I I, I just want to dig deeper to why you don't feel like it was a regular Uber driver. Cause he had a gun. Because the type of gun he had, he was getting that shit cracking. He had about he had but, about it sounded like. But he drive because we're in a city. It, we're at five, look at which we say today we had five hundred murders. Can you imagine yeah, as an Uber driver the fear you fear you you feel at night? You don't know, and he was Uber Eats. You don't know where you about to, to pull up to. I mean, let me hit you real quick, for, well, I guess that'd be, uh, but anyway, it's a lot of people in the city of Philadelphia, that's 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 that cover up, Uber Eats. So if I'm riding around, if I'm doing Uber. I can always say a passenger left X Y Z in the back of my car. I didn't know. Right. You understand? So that probably give you. I don't know the, the exact law on that, but, but it'll help you out. I yeah, get but what still, you're doing, but I, I don't. I don't still, feel like, like in my head, right? I don't care what they're doing driving Uber. I don't care what they're doing. Yeah. That still doesn't give a person the right to try to no, rob no, no, them. No, 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 no. And whatever That's happens correct. to whatever happens to those people who try to put the jokes down. It's consequences too. No, it is. It's kind of like is. I'm telling you, had I had a weapon on me when my little incident and situation. But you know happened, what? You know what, Wiz? Every it, God always got everything planned out the way it needs to be planned out. Right. So if you would have had a weapon on you, it's a good chance I'd be in jail right now. Or you won't be here or at I all. I won't be here at all. Because you know what I'm saying? Could, yeah. Now let, let, let's get into let's get into one thing. Uh, hold your thought for a second. Something I want us all to remember. When you speak about the 500 murders in Philadelphia, right? today we've reached that 500 murder milestone. Yeah. There are 2,000 people besides that 500 were shot. They got shot. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. So it's 500 yeah. murders. So even the media yeah. is deceiving in what they speak and what yeah. they talk and what's in your mind. 500 people are dead, but 2,000 other ones got shot. Some are going to be crippled, paralyzed, yeah. dismembered, lose limbs, disfigured, messed up and traumatized PTSD. for life. PTSD. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's 500 dead, but 2,000 who have survived, and we don't know the conditions of all their survivors. Wow. Right? Right. So we have to understand, and we'll get into it later, if you hold your thought, that a handgun, a handgun only kills statistically about less than 20% of everyone that it's aimed at. It's 20%, wow. you know? So 80% of the people survive. On the other hand, if you have a rifle, 85% of the people die and only 15 survive. We're glad people weren't carrying rifles. Wow. Keep that in mind. So when, they, so when they putting that out, so they trying to pass all these laws for people to be able to carry these assault rifles. So you no, think, to carry a gun, period, no, no, without it. No, 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 not that. But they want people to actually be able to carry assault rifles. They took they, they Wait, took, in Philadelphia? No, they took it away at one particular time. They, remember that law they was trying to pass? Well, people, uh, some liberal people or conservative people, which well, one way or the other, yeah. they're against assault rifles. They think you need a bolt action, only like a hunting gun. Yeah. But, you know, so the assault 
rifle is a moniker that they use, and some people are for it or forgets against it. I don't believe it's a problem with it. In other words, if SWAT have it and Navy SEALs have it, I want it. You right. know, I'm a legal gun owner, and uh, and I believe that uh, when you're in danger, and your family's in danger, and you're in danger, the first responder is you yourself. Right. Yeah, you right. have to take care of yourself. Right. You're the first response. A gang of girls or guys come to beat up your daughter at the door, and they're bold, and they knock on the door, and they're going to drag her out the house. 911 is not going to help you. They're always a couple minutes short or too right. late, or they're always after a crime. You can call 911 and say, yo, Joey's coming around here to punch me in the face. The operator's going to say, call me back when Joey gets to the door. When he punches So let's, let's talk. Punch let's dig. That, that, that brings me into this. <laughs> Hold on. Let's, let's dig into, into this. Uh, let, let's go through the scenarios. Uh, so, Joey is coming to the door to punch me in my face. If I'm a gun owner and I open my door, is that threat enough for me to shoot Joey? No. No. I okay. can answer that. No. no. Because that nothing is. nothing told you you had to open up the door. That's that part, too. You were already on the other side of the door. So, this gets saying. back to the thing when we talked about earlier with the Aubrey case, mm -hmm. right? So, then you always have to look at everything with a side eye, you know? So the commentators are on TV, the news people, the lawyers, and the prosecutors in the case. But you have to look at something at the side with a side eye. So they already tell you. And then people are doing the job. And then they're tired, they're under pressure, and they forget. So they already tell you, you cannot claim self-defense if it's something you initiated. Right. You can't pull a gun on someone, and then when they hit you, you say... Hey, I was self-defending myself. No, you pulled the gun out first. So this guy is running away. You hit him with the car. You hit him with one of the pickup trucks. He's still trying to run away. He can't outrun a truck. He can't run that far. He's running down a country road. Now you get out with a shotgun. They're like, he didn't listen to us. He had no duty to listen to you because you're not the police. Right. He's scared for his life. You're pointing a shotgun at him. He's scared for his life. So then they're like, they make the whole thing. The jurors are looking at it because they're crazy. They're saying, well, we want to see the video. He's charging at us. Well, where else can he go? He's on a country road. He right. can't run forever. You're chasing him with trucks. Yeah. He's going to be tired. The only thing left to do is for him to stand and try to defend himself. He's the only one that can claim self-defense, and he died. That was the same thing with the Zimmerman case. Right. So what if he took the gun, right? What if he... Just so happen to like wrestle, get the gun, and then shoot them. Oh, now you got a problem. Once you take the gun, you have it. How are you in danger now? Mm. So right? You can't even shoot. You can't even shoot. You got it. Or You're not in danger now. Unless they try to retake it back. I don't like these gun laws. Okay, listen, cuz with the I don't, with, I don't with like the, these uh, gun laws. With the with the Uber driver. Mm-hmm. Them dudes was running away from him after he pulled that shit out. So he still tore their ass up while they was running away. No, in the video, he are, he, he pulled out and shot simultaneously. Yeah, but they was they was getting away. They was and he was tearing their ass up while he was getting away. So how is that justified? It depends, but when they approached him, they had a gun. Right. They more than one had guns, right? right. So are they running for cover to still shoot back? So it's an ongoing mm. thing. The threat is still a threat. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. So every situation is different, but it has to meet these burdens. You know that's, what I mean? That's right. a trick. These so, gun laws are super tricky. But, un but, but super tricky or what? The thing is, like you said earlier, the victims' families, now we want to call them victims, but the aggressors, right. the perpetrators' families are crying, right? right? But listen, it would have been the other guy crying. His family would have been crying. That part as well. It's, a, it's thank goodness that this guy had a gun and he protected himself because there is no time to call 911. We talk about shootings. There are so many in this city. Last week, the 7 to 18 year old boy walking his girlfriend in there at Erie Avenue, they steal Simple. her and cell they, phone and, and shoot, shoot him up. in the chest. Mm. And kill After him. they got the phone, they took a phone from her. But shoot him in the chest and kill him. That's crazy. It's crazy out here. So what do we know? You need to train. You need to have your own firearm because the police are always too late. Right. And if you legally can, more of us need to carry a gun. And maybe if the tides start changing mm -hmm. and some of these perpetrators and aggressors were to meet a bad end, people will think twice about robbing them because so, you don't know who's armed. So for the people that don't know, because 
like um just because they license to carry, they feel as though they could just shoot anybody from an argument or whatever and they say their life is in fear or whatever. And like you just said, you said if somebody breaking your house, they feel as though they can kill that person at all means. But that's not the case. So what you do? Not the case you somebody breaks your That's not the case. You give off a warning shot, like warning. Wow. You should never give off a warning shot. <laughs> no. It's illegal. <laughs> you should never oh, give off a warning so, shot but, because where the bullet goes, it has to come back down. Damn. Right. So oh, you're just recklessly God. endangering someone. Right. And then if you're giving off a warning shot, what does it do? Does it give it the desired effect? You cannot brandish a gun at people and get them to stop. There are very fine lines. So, you know so, what I mean? So even if so, so let's just say these intruders is in your house, right? They're in your house. Your family's in there. Like you in fear for your family. You're, you got your kids or whatever. You got the gun, you're going down. Now, these intruders is all over your house. Now, what do you do? Like, they coming up. You see them. What do you do? Let's give you the definition of legal force, deadly force, and then you'll tell me what you can do. Okay. So the definition of legal force, deadly force, justifiable homicide is this, that when any person, yourself or someone else, is faced with a force that will cause you serious grave injury or death. That action has to be imminent. It has to be going down right now, and you should be in fear of your life. Right. And the person that's inflicting this action has to have the opportunity to do it. Right. So in other words, I can't. it has to be imminent going down right now, and it has to cause that person, you or someone else, serious grave injury or death. So in other words, if I say, Ray, when I see you, the next time I see you, I'm going to bust you in the head with a hammer. You can't shoot me now and say I threatened you. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. But if I'm getting out the car with the hammer, right. and I'm saying, when I get over there, I have the opportunity, I have the a means, the ability to kill him right. or cause some serious injury. I have the opportunity. It's happening right now. It's imminent. It's going down now. Right. And he's in fear that I'm going to split his wig or kill him with this hammer. Yeah. That is the definition of legal force, deadly force, right? Right. Now, there can be tricky situations, right? Like you're saying, someone breaks into your house. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, are you facing that type of threat inside your house? But it's your domicile and there are other things. Does the person have a weapon? Are they threatening you? Now, if they're in the house, you have them at gunpoint and they're trying to leave and they're not doing anything and they're going to stand there while you call the cops, that's something different. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But if they're inside your house and they're, you're faced with this threat, grave serious injury or someone in your family in that house is faced with that threat and it's going down right now, you have a right to defend yourself. But see, here's where I'm confused because I come downstairs and you in my house, do I give you the chance to pull out a gun for me to feel threatened or do I shoot you? Because now I give you the chance to pull out a gun for me to feel threatened, you might shoot me. Right. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a tricky situation. Yeah. But, but remember, we already talked about it in our opening segment when we started. There are two justice systems in America, right. one for black people right. and one for white people. Right. So Kyle Richardson can do what he did, right. but let it be somebody else. Right. It's not going down like that. But that should not be that pause and that hesitation can be life or death that's, for you. That's, yeah. that's, that's what I'm that saying. Pause like, and that right. hesitation so, so, can be your you life. Don't, you don't, suppose you don't fire. And then he gets who then truly get the chance to just run up on you and harm your family. Then what? But this is where training comes from. Training, constantly training. You know the saying, use it or lose it. You always drive your car. You drive your car every day. An automobile is a deadly, deadly weapon. An automobile is a deadly weapon. A truck is a deadlier weapon. And the bigger the truck, school bus is a deadlier weapon. We just seen the people crash in Washington or right, whatever right, right. With the, in the parade. Yeah. Automobile is a deadly weapon. They make you go to driving school. They make you get a license, this, that, and the other. Gun is a deadly weapon, and everyone's complaining about it, but you get a gun in Pennsylvania and get a license to carry, and they don't ask you if you ever shot or if you ever oh, took any I classes. Got my gun. Yes. So, I'm a prime so, example. So, I got my gun, and they didn't so give me So this is what we're saying. But I'm here to tell you, though, because you have this deadly weapon, you should be training with it. Mm -hmm. You should be training with it. So in the case when someone's in your house and you come down at night and you hear the click in the don't dark, you should be able to get your gun. And if it's, you should have a flashlight if you're going to be shooting at night. It should be a, on your gun, on your nightstand, or wherever you keep it. It should be a flashlight, too, because it's dark. 
Now you're coming down here and you'll see a guy my size or whatever in your living room and you say, freeze, don't move. Or, yo, what you doing? Now, if I got my hands up like this because you told me to put them there and then you're like, I'm so scared to death, what if he grabs a gun? How? You train. So soon as you tell me to keep my hands up and I'm putting them down, hey, I reached, you shot him. But that was a good thing for you because you train and you practice this at your range class. You had an instructor. You don't need an instructor for life, but you got 10, 20 drills. You took several classes, and this is what you do. Because if some girls come up in your business and talk smack, you're going to give them the hands. A person in your house in the middle of the night, you need to give them the tool. Hmm. Right. Right? That's it. So, cuz, let's talk about this because she had asked me um, like a week or so uh, ago. She asked me, could you shoot for somebody else that's in the situation? I didn't ask that. No, we was talking about it, and you was like, "Oh, so if somebody doing something, else, somebody else, I can shoot." Oh yeah, I did. Did you that, forget? Sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> so it's like I was telling that to what prevent a forcible felony, you could tear somebody ass away. So he right. used he used big words, right? <laughs> Forcible felony. He used big words, and he's going to confuse some people because if it wasn't me, he would confuse me. So we're going to put it to you this way. I'm sitting here next to Wiz. Somebody come in this joint right now and say, Wiz, you owe me money, and I'm going to bust your head, and I'm coming over here with this machete. Wiz naked, he don't got no gun on. They coming over here, they got the machete in their hand looking like Freddy Krueger, and they coming. <laughs> Can I shoot him? Can you shoot him to save Wiz? Yeah. No. Huh? You can't, yes. you? I'm not going anywhere with Wiz. We'll never hang out together. We go. This is the last time you're going to see me sitting next to him. Wiz said no. We'll never hang out again. No, I'm no, never no, sitting no, next no, to him. Ask you. Could you shoot him? Yeah. You I'm saving no. your life, Wiz. Oh, yeah, no, I, no I, I would want you to. Yeah, but that's you're called saying, that's called preventing a forcible oh, felony God. because Tears he's about to force a felony upon you. Tear his ass up. But I, you, but I, you, would, I would hope so. But you guys forgot the definition that I gave you. Any action inflicted upon you or another person. person. Oh. So it's right. almost like you a cop with this thing. No, you're not a cop. Not, not, a, cop, not, a, cop, not a cop, right? No, I'm not going to say but a cop. But we need to be good citizens <laughs> That's because what I'm we saying. can stop crime. Right. But we need to be good citizens because you always see a person in the church, someone comes in and do a mass murder in the church, and then someone in a pew right. saved everybody. Right. Someone at the job, someone had a gun and saved everybody. We forget a couple years ago that in Ridley, going out uh, Route 3, out near uh, Springfield Mall, past that, that a psychiatrist, somebody came into the doctor's office to kill a psychiatrist, shot the secretary, shot another doctor. Psychiatrist had a gun in his lab coat, and he shot the person. Mm. He killed the killer. They was coming to kill him. So we forget that some of this stuff happened at employer jobs, schools, or whatever, and right. sometimes guns are used thousands of times a year to save people and other people and innocent bystanders. All right, so I know we have a million scenarios, but this, this is the last hypothetical scenario because I am a business owner. So I'm in my place of business. Somebody comes in, because I had this happen before, actually, before I was a gun owner. Somebody came in and made me uncomfortable because he had his hand in his pocket. His pocket was looking very, very heavy. He was fidgety. He never ended up doing something. Somebody else came out the, somebody came out the dressing room. Like I really felt like if the person that was not that was in the dressing room, that he really came in there to rob me just by his actions. Now, me as my license as a licensed gun owner, <laughs> if I feel threatened in that way, but I don't see a gun until he pulled out a gun, I can't pull out my gun. You damn right. This is the most amazing question. I've been teaching guns for twenty years. That scenario you brought up is amazing. I don't know why I never thought to teach this, but we teach it a different way. Okay. But what you just said is. You felt threatened, thought he had a gun, and that's what the police say when they shoot unarmed black people all the time. Jeff Blake, all he did was disobey them and they shot him seven times in the mm. back. He's paralyzed, that caused all the unrest, and the cop did not get charged. But guess that's what? what they, they, it's they, to Americans, like you said. Like to Americans. So what <laughs> happens is you have to be able to articulate what you felt, because what it's called, is called a furtive movement. Furtive movement, right? Okay. So cops will say this, they teach them at an academy, and I'm a law enforcement handgun instructor, a whole bunch of stuff. But this is what they teach you. So you sitting here, you say, uh, show me your hands. Now I put my hands in my, in my thing. Now you're saying, show me your hands. Before I could show me your hands, because white people are scared of us. They're patrolling these neighborhoods. They have no empathy for us. We the big black boogeyman. 
Mm-hmm. And you saying, show me your hands. Now I show you my hands, but I may be high on drugs, whatever. Boom! I thought he was drawn. And there's no charge. They, mm-hmm. beat the, they don't even get a charge. It's called a further movement. But you try it in your store and see what happened. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Along yeah. those best. I don't know. Yeah. But training, you have a gun, you have a business, you learn how to drive. You may even take a defensive driving class to make your insurance cheaper. You'll send your teenager to a driving class so your insurance won't be so high. But you will buy a gun and get a permit and there's no class required so you'll never take one. Mm. You don't store it correctly. You don't know how to use it correctly. But the bad guys and these young bulls, they playing Call of Duty 24 hours a day right. since they seven years right. old. Right. They 15, 16 years old already got four or five bodies. Yep. They already practicing, and you had a gun and a license for 10 years, and you only fired it twice. Wow. You lose it. Mm-hmm. You lost. Right? So just imagine a basketball player never takes a three-point shot, and then he shoots it. Like, we know ben that was Simmons. a brick, right? <laughs> we know that was a brick. <laughs> You have a gun, you never go to the range, mm. and you want to shoot somebody from the stoplight to stoplight. You can't shoot from the width of your house. <laughs> you can't shoot from here to the back wall in this building because you don't go to range, you don't practice. So l- l- let me ask you this, right? Yeah. With all that's going on in the black community, would you say if most of us had legal guns, do you think the crime rate would be what it is if we, if like more of us had legal guns? Absolutely. It's been proven statistically. So what happens, the gun debate is not an emotional debate. They have hard science numbers. You know, like, you know, like the vaccine work, it don't work. You, need, you know what I mean? They have hard numbers. Mm-hmm. What would be an emotional debate would be something, depending on what you believe, would be something like abortion. You know, that's an emotional debate. But statistically, numbers, real hard math science, you know, like water boils at 212 degrees, it freezes at 32, Mm -hmm. zero sub. Real hard numbers state and have been proven that when you're in a community with legally owned gun, gun people, the crime rate goes down, right? Then there are statistics, and Texas is one state that keeps them, Florida is another state, that gun owners who have permits, they shoot less people than regular criminals, right? Mm. So then we'll go back in history because I've been a gun permit carrier in Pennsylvania. Uh, I got a gun permit when I was uh, 21 years old, and that was a long time ago. It was decades ago. <laughs> long way ago right? So that was when it was hard to get a gun permit, and Philadelphia was able to make their own gun laws. Right. So I had a gun permit, and now it's easy for Philadelphia citizens to get a gun permit. So the city was sued. And I forget the year, but it's maybe a dozen or so years ago. The city was sued because Philadelphia was allowed to make its own gun laws. It didn't have to match Harrisburg. Mm. So people had sued them for years. So Philadelphia, for decades, I say decades, 20, 30, 40 years, would only give out 1,000 gun permits for the whole year. And that's a high number. So I'm talking about 20, 30, 40, 50 years. There was no gun permit. You, You would have to go to 55th and Pine. That's where it was 100 years ago. And when you got a gun permit in Philadelphia, you had to show your bank records for six months. Damn. You had to, they had the detectives come out and they interview your neighbors, two on this side of the block and two on that side. You had to carry a lot of cash and every business you spent cash to, the detectives came out and interviewed them to see if you really spent that cash. That's when I got a gun permit. And then after that, you go to the state police barrack, you go to Philadelphia up on, on, on State Road, or Colosseum was the only other place you can go to. They give you 10 bullets and your gun, and you take a shooting test. They sued them for 20 years to make Philadelphia stop doing that. So for years, and I got a gun permit over 30 years ago. Do you know how hard that was? They interview your neighbors. they, they, They come out. So they were sued to make it like the rest of the state. What was the rest of the state? You apply for a gun permit. No shoot, no, no, you apply for it, you get it. So they were sued, and Philadelphia lost. They held them off for a dozen years. So when Philadelphia lost, it was October 1st. I forget the year, 98, 2000. 
So from this year, they for 30, 40 years, they only gave out 800 to 1,000 permits. It's October 1st, so you got October, November, December. 90 days before the end of the year, how many gun permits they give out? 3,000. Dang. Wow. For 40 years, they never gave out more than 1,000. Mm. Every year, they gave out 3,000 in 90 days. What did they do the next year? Back what did they do? Back to the 1,000. 20,000. Damn. Wow. 20,000 every year. Damn. Six. And the murder rate ain't go crazy. So legal gun owners don't make the streets run red with blood. You understand that? Exactly. So when you're listening wow. to something and your pastor at your church telling you you don't need a gun, call the police. When Barack Obama telling you you don't need a gun, but he got secret service for life all with guns. His daughter's got secret service for all with guns and he telling you you don't need a gun. He's a damn fool. So they do 20,000 every year since. Get into it. And the city don't run red with blood. Right. Our community needs to be more educated on it, though. Exactly. Because right. it's a lack of education That's about deep, gun isn't laws. It? I, like, because our community, most of the people in our community think, I'm just getting this strap. That's what they think. Not knowing, like, it's so much, it's so easy. Like, and it, and I did research it, on it. They don't it. tell you. It's so easy to get a, a gun license. It is. Got, right. As long as you pass the background check, yeah. pretty much. But I got one better for you. They just did that. We, we're, we're uneducated and we don't know. Right. And the black people, one of the things about our classes, and we've been teaching these classes for a dozen of years, uh, uh, more mm -hmm. than that, you don't know that in, Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, and you go to police state website, look up gun laws. If you legally buy a gun, your son go buys a gun, your brother go buys a gun legally, goes to the store, he buys it. He has no record. They gave him the gun. But he's carrying it on the street. Now he didn't boo for violation of the Uniform Firearms yeah, Act. They're yeah, going to try yeah. to boo him. He's going to pay 5000 for a lawyer. This, that, Wait, and the other. Mm -hmm. He goes and buys a gun legally. Yeah. But he's carrying it without a permit. Oh. That's illegal. That's a violation of the Uniform Firearms Act. But that's only oh. in Philly, right? It's Pennsylvania. It's everywhere, right? But... He didn't get a permit, and you're not allowed to carry a loaded gun on the street without a permit, right? Okay. So what happens is, now he gets caught with the gun, and he's going to pay a lawyer, and they're going to take a plea, and they're going to give him two years probation, because he had no record and no drugs or nothing. He was just carrying it. And he's going to plead deal for two years. And then he has a gun charge on his record. And, right, two years. But guess what happens? He should have fought it. Because he was legally owner of the gun and he had no criminal record, the worst law on the book for that penalty is for that is one year and it's a misdemeanor. So you could fight it, lose, get it, and then you only charge with a misdemeanor. You can go get a gun permit next year. But we pay the lawyer. I don't want to name names. We pay them five thousand. They take the deal. You plead to two years because you yeah, ain't studying nothing, you're and now no you'll law. never own a gun the rest of your life. That's right. called lawyer robbery. Lawyers robbing people every you day. You never own right. a gun the rest of your life. But we right. don't do our own research. We research everything else. Balenciagos. These the best sneakers. <laughs> these the best tires. This the best car. Right. You give your money to the lawyer. You don't do no Google search. So, cause so for a lot of people that don't know, that's legal gun owners. Mm -hmm. Give them a cause. I'm, I'm gonna ask you a couple questions about the forcible felony. All right, the one, John, is uh, if somebody trying to remove you from your vehicle. Carjacking. Yeah, that's the forcible or felony. Kidnapping. That's a, or kidnapping. Or you, kidnapping. Or rape. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we get somebody it. might be trying to we rape you. We just keep going. <laughs> so once they hit that handle and open your door, you got the right to tear their ass out the frame. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just. But, but, you, but you have to be able to articulate this stuff. But it's like this. Really, you you know what happened? We all we all from the hood. This is this is where we're at, right? Mm -hmm. You'll take a person, and and then you'll understand what I'm saying about we need to train. Whether you go see me or other people, there are trainers out here, right? So what happened? You ever see a guy and he beats up everybody in the neighborhood, and he been doing it since fifth grade. His whole house fight. It's ten brothers. Them niggas the worst. The sister the worst. They the worst. They bad business. But then one brother wants to learn how to box, and he goes to the gym, and he can't beat nobody. He's starting from scratch. Right. This is the gun stuff. And then you know some people who box, and some people are scared of people boxing in sport, and then some people box, they knock everybody block off, right? right. And there's no comp. When mm -hmm. you have a gun and you train, you know how we used to say, 
I wish you would. I wish a person would. <laughs> you're carrying a gun, you're trained. You can pull this door open because someone pulled my door open by mistake. And I didn't blast him. But how much could he? He could have got blasted. He thought you was an Uber. No, I, he, we both had white cars, and oh, he was wow. rushing out of a tax place, and he opened up my door, and I was going into the tax place. Uh, and he pulled the door open. I'm like, oh, you know, what's up? <laughs> He's like, oh, man, I thought it was my car. And his car was right next to mine. Right, right. Right. It was just white. <laughs> we not that nervous and scary and jittery yeah, 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 to yeah, be yeah. blasting people. The same right. in the store. So you can prepare. Unless you, you ain't can living play, right. You know, listen, you can prepare, <laughs> place your stuff certain where you need OC spray, different thing. But you know what I mean? I wish it, we're not just going to be shooting people because they're doing this. You know yeah. what I mean? We have to wait, but you can wait because you know what it is. If it's in here in the pocket or whatever, now if he come over, he starts talking, now you give it to him. I'm not saying you got beat up, but you know what I mean? Yeah. We shouldn't be that nervous and jittery. We talking about today. The way I mean, these jokers are yeah, acting I'm, today, let me get, let me it's get on so this. violent here. Like, it's so violent. Like, it's, it's super Wait, violent, man. Well, it's ultra violent. Because what message do you have for people that get their gun license and be so gun hold? oh, I can't wait to tear a nigga out of the frame. I can't wait to... That was Kyle Richardson. Mm. Yeah, right, yeah. That was, it, was but he, didn't, he didn't have a license, and he was underage. But he wanted to. He was so eager with that gun. Well, right? written house, written house, written house. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, so yeah. he was so eager Bitchin with house. that gun. But you have some people who are <laughs> like that, and I just like to say because they're two Americans. We already talked about right. It. They got a spot for you at Phoenixville. Right. They got a spot for you. Hostel, could, Somerset, wherever you need the green. Can, they got a spot for you because I, I had yeah. a homie right. Mm -hmm. He was on that tape time, I believe, or whatever. He was, I ain't going to say the whole situation. I hope you talked him off the ledge. No, no, no. I ain't going to say the situation, but the situation. He got into something in, on Broad Street with a uh, off-duty police officer. Mm -hmm. Pulled the joint out. I think he shot at him or he shot him. Right now, he's doing about, I think he's doing like 15 to 30. But he had to, he had to, he had to floor the joint. Right. You know I mean, so that's why I say, what do you say to people like that to think just because they got to join, they get into an argument, they get into a, a, a fight, they can just shoot anybody. I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you, I'll give you what was told to me 30 some years ago by someone that I really looked up to a mentor, right? Because we family, we have the same family and they, they, it wasn't into us having guns. We come from a family of cops. Yeah. We come from a family hold of on, cops. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you, I know you know, mm -hmm. did, did you but did you know that we had the first black police I, officer? Yes, I knew that. In Philadelphia? Yeah. yeah. That's our, your family? Oliver, yeah. yeah, that's our family. Yeah. So wow. our great-grandfather was a cop. Uh, George Oliver was a cop in 1902. Wow. He had four brothers. There was cops in 1906, 1908, 1910. Mm. Then wow. my grandfather is the youngest of a... Uh, my grandfather is the youngest of George Oliver's kids. And uh, he's like the it's two brothers that didn't become cops. The other ones became cops and detectives, and uh, they served the police department. And then we got a bunch of family of hustlers and drug dealers and everything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. But in 1902, <laughs> our great grandfather was the first cop in Philadelphia, black cop in Philadelphia. There was one in the 1800s, yeah. but our grandfather is the first one of this century or the last century. Oh, okay. They had one in 1880. He arrested a white person for drunkenness on him. Chestnut Street. They hung him. Yeah. On Chestnut Damn. Street. So the next cop was our great grandfather. Yeah, see, I, and then all his brothers. Wow. See, I was telling people not to cut you off, but I told people that those lynchings and that that, that racism went on up north too. But go ahead, back to finish your story. Yeah. I be having debates about that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really, because I thought Philadelphia, uh, which come came here, who was it? Harriet came here to, to, to shake off the slavery shit and all that. Man, they would come in and catch slaves and take them back down there. Yeah. Then Damn. there was crooked whites up here that were. Uh, Catch uh, black people, trick them like, oh yeah, come on, we're gonna get you to Harriet. Come on. <laughs> so my so other my, my other question was, uh, when when you said the person breaking your house or whatever, mm -hmm. I, I forgot the actual scenario that you was telling me before, but is um the guy running upstairs. So let me tell you that I know the scenario. Okay. So what what we've done, our claim to fame is one of our claim to fames. We're, we're, we're kind of successful, alhamdulillah. But one of our things is in 2005, we started teaching people how to get the Florida permit, right? Mm -hmm. So at that time, Florida had reciprocity with Pennsylvania. So in other words, 
if you had a Florida permit, even if it was a non-resident, it made you legally carry here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Kathleen Kane changed that like the, the first 45 days she got in office and we know she was crooked and she went to jail, the attorney right. general. So what happened is I started teaching that permit and I taught thousands of people how to get that permit. We would have class, we taught it for eight years, right? We still teach it, people still want it, we still teach it. So what happened in one of the classes, we would give a scenario and we'll give the scenario now and it's a tricky scenario and it's something what you were talking about earlier. So we'll tell you, you and your husband or you and your wife, you and your significant other, you go out to dinner, right? And as you go out to dinner, you have two little girls, Mary and Judy. They're your daughters. One's four and one's two years old. So you're going out to dinner, you and your husband, you and your wife, you're going out to dinner and you're, and you're gun carriers. You got, both guys have permits to carry. So what happened, you get Sally, who lives on your block, she's 16 years old, and she's your babysitter. You've known her since she was born, you've known her parents, she lives down the street. So Sally's watching your child, your children, as you're going to dinner, you're going to a date night, movie and a dinner, right? Now when you go to movie and a dinner, you come home about 10 o'clock at night. You know, Sally's watched your kids before, it's not the first time, you trust her, you've known her all your life. As Soon as you stick your key in the door, your living room, you see a big guy, my size or bigger, I got your flat screen TV, it's in my hands. You startle me, I startle you. We surprise each other. You stick your key in the door, you open it, and I got your flat screen right in my hands. I drop it, bam! Crash and shatters. I run up the steps. Do you shoot me? Yes. Quick draw. Do you shoot me, Wiz? Do you shoot me? Do you shoot me? me too I'm late, shoot too late. I'm, I'm going. Too late. No, I'm it's gun, not, it's gun not, stuff. Split second. Wiz just said it's violent out here. These people violent. But, 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 you can't be waiting. Right. Didn't no, he just say that no, three listen, minutes ago? Listen, listen. Wiz, do you shoot me? Yes, I'm busting your ass. Oh, me, right, I'm busting your ass. Oh, all right, all right then. Wiz Boom. said he busting. And I'm I took to time. Wiz missed me. I got away. Do you shoot me? You said it already. Yes. Do you shoot me, cuz? You know the answer. I forgot the answer. No. Well, do you shoot me? Do you shoot me? <laughs> I'm going to shoot you regardless. Go no, ahead. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Me, I'm going to shoot regardless. Huh? But I don't think... I, I I'm think gonna you want to shoot. Let me tell you why I say yes, I'm going to shoot you. Don't even tell me yes. I'm going to shoot you while you got the TV in your head. Don't tell me yes. Don't tell me why you shot me because I broke your TV. I dropped it in red. I taught this class for like 14, 15 years. That's a lot of people say that. They shot because I broke the TV. <laughs> but you took too long. You shot, but you missed. We'll mm -hmm. give you that. No, I'm you shot sure. at me, you missed. No, you missed. You took yeah, too yeah, long. Yeah, I was yeah. going. No, but, you shot. No, I know the answer. No, I'm, I know the answer. I'm thinking know the answer. about the scenario, and I'm also thinking about what you said earlier. You That's said something you earlier. Think about. That's earlier, you, you said about. something. But that's what I was going to say. I shot him because Sally and my kids is upstairs, right. and they in imminent danger. You ran up the stairs. How do you know they was upstairs? Oh shit! <laughs> you just you just open up the door. You don't know where the hell they at. But they might be at the corner store. But if you don't see them, like anything can happen. No, huh, but I need you to articulate. So you said you shot because I, I felt like my kids was upstairs, was running up the steps, and my my Sally and my kids is in danger. All right I shot then. You. And why you shoot? Cause now you, it came back to you what the answer was. <laughs> so we won't ask you. Where's why you shoot? I'm we know you missed though. No, you missed. No, you missed. I, I, I broke your TV. I was in your crib. You no, missed. Where's you me, shot? I am not missing. As soon as I open the door, right? The minute I open the door and I see somebody, big motherfucker in my house with TV, I'm strapped, I'm busting your ass. But ho, you said you're thinking of a scenario. I no, got a TV. Me, no, I'm telling you, what you no, show me listen, for? Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm you got, saying. You got the TV. Right now, I'm thinking about what you said earlier. I'm thinking about something you said earlier. Like, yeah, me, I probably would shoot, but... I'm probably gonna go to jail for shooting this motherfucker. <laughs> you wanna go to jail? No, that's not what you I'm saying. Jail, you well, why'd go you home? shoot me and I got the TV? Because man. that's just me. You wanna go to I'm jail? Gonna you wanna go home. <laughs> Pause. I'm gonna shoot you. I'm definitely shooting you if I open my door and I see you in there. So I'm no. just going. I'm just. I'm just comparing the scenarios you so, said. Uh, like you said, certain certain times you can't shoot these people. So uh, technically, you can't I think, even I think I'm supposed shot. to open up the door with the TV, and I'm supposed to tell you to freeze. I can draw my weapon right and tell you to freeze. 
I ain't paying that shit no mind. I dropped the TV and I ran upstairs. No, I'm, I'm saying, not changing I'm what saying happened. Before you ran up the stuff. No, they say, yo, yo, did you hear what I said? Hold up, but let her, let her know, cause you no. never you never pull your weapon unless you're gonna use that money. Hold on, hold on. She, well, how I, you gonna free her? We're not, we're not, we're, we're, we're not gonna talk her out of her story. Come on, <laughs> okay. let's come through this scenario. Okay. You stick your key in the door. And you got the TV. I Bow. got the TV. I'm trying Bow. to be a law abiding. Oh, you got the TV. You startle me, I startle you. Oh, I'm scared, so I can shoot. Oh, yeah, but listen, <laughs> I dropped that TV on the ground and I'm running up the steps. Oh, yeah, no, I know I shoot you then. I'm saying, post you don't drop it and I, we just get to I'm the, dropping I'm it. Scared. Don't change my story. It's right. my story. I dropped <laughs> it. You dropped it. Oh, yeah, I'm still I, I dropped it. Before you still that shooting TV me? hit the ground, yeah, your ass. I'm scared. Is... My kids yeah. upstairs. I, oh, I don't know where they are. I'm assuming my kids could be upstairs. That's why I'm going to shoot because my fucking kid, like, what the, where the fuck is my my kids. <laughs> I open this fucking door, see this big motherfucker, bow, 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 bow. We could curse like Chloe. this. Like, hey, you Chloe! Chloe! <laughs> Chloe! <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> I'm calling my baby. You changed the name and name. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm calling my he baby. Real kids. He really yeah, like, where's my baby at? Like, yeah. I open the door and see a big motherfucker. I'm like, what the fuck? So, so, give so, me so this is, so, so let, that's hitting. enough with the suspense. So this I is the answer. Right. So when we teach the class, you have some people who say no after we have been giving them different scenarios and the definition all class time, four hour class, six hour. We give them the definition, right? Do I have the ability to cause someone serious injury or, 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 or death? Do I have the opportunity? Is it imminent? Is it going down right now? We get against you or someone else. So they, some people in the class say, I'm shooting because I broke the TV, but some people say what you said. I didn't know where my kids was, or I thought they was upstairs, so I shot. And we clear with the scenario, you only shooting in the back. Because I'm running. You already only shoot me in the back. And then when the police come, and they articulate, and they say this happened, but after you shoot me all in my back, and I'm dead on your steps, Sally, he changed the name, but Sally and the kids <laughs> come running out the basement. Mommy, Daddy, what's that noise? And they see me dead on the steps. Is that a good shoot? We say yes. Did I have the ability, opportunity, imminent? Was it going down right now? And did you fear for your kid's life? Yes. Yes. So that satisfies the thing. We get a good lawyer. We give Shaka Johnson all our money. He beats the case, right? Now, this is what we tell the people <laughs> who hesitated like Wiz, but Wiz clean it up later. He could no, tell my impression. No, Dennis I'm not Kogan. Hesitating. Okay. Dennis but Kogan. This, is what we this is what we tell the people in the class <laughs> who said, no, they didn't shoot. And when we teach this in the class, it's 30, 40 people. It's jam packed. They arguing like cats and dogs. Some people say, no, we never hang out with the people who said no. <laughs> we teach guns, we only hang out with shooters. <laughs> Let you know. If you would say you ain't shooting and you don't want to practice shoot, we only hang out with shooters. We only hang with shooters. We only hang with shooters. We fucking right? be best friends. So listen, the you people say in. no, and this is what we tell them when they say no. We say, you run it through the house because the person runs up the steps, he jumps out the beer room window onto the garage, he jumps over the neighbor's fence, and he, he gets away over fence after fence, and you never see him or hear from him again. But you run it through the house, and you're looking for your kids, and you're looking for Sally. You find one daughter with her neck cut, and mm. she's stuffed in the dryer. Mm. You find a small two-year-old neck cut, and she's in the washing machine. You can't find Sally nowhere. You go to the coat closet, clothes messed up, hung with a rope, murdered her and sodomized, and she's in the closet. You had the opportunity, and you let the person get away, and it's a cold case, and they never, ever find her. Damn. That's what we talk about in class. That's why right? when I open that door. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see, do you see how yeah, real it is right. and how... Right. Things, these situations. So we always talk about life is stranger than fiction. These things really happen. We only have to look at the news every single day. Not only at the 500 murders, but the 2,000 people Very plus sad. who got so, shot, who lived. Let's talk about the uh, reciprocity, though. So that, is, am I saying it right? Yes. Okay. Excellent. So that brings me to, I was, I was talking to someone the other day, and they were saying, like, I'm licensed in Pennsylvania, but I can't take my gun to Jersey. So my whole thing no, is like, can. this is crazy. That's what I know. Because no, suppose, I'm suppose, suppose, suppose we just out at the spur of the moment and somebody like, let's go to Cherry Hill. I have to make a, a decision in my head that I now have to go home and put my gun up yes. before we go to the Cherry Hill. Or leave it, in Absolutely. Your, leave it in your car and get in the car with somebody else. Absolutely. Leave it. 
Don't take it under no circumstance. So that's what we I want to understand. So Pennsylvania gives you the right to is Pens- you can carry in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania only. No, you can carry in Pennsylvania. And I believe twenty three other states or something that have reciprocity with Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. So your Pennsylvania permit is good in twenty three other states. Okay, and I need to search for other states. Uh, but Georgia Florida, clearly is not one. Is of it states. good in Atlanta? Pennsylvania good in Georgia? Yes. You just got to check it on the plane. How do you check? So so many idiots, right? have gotten locked up by taking their guns to the airport. How do you check? What's the proper way see how you to check gun. your gun? At the airport? At the airport. It what's takes it? takes 60 seconds. Hmm. Wow. 60 seconds. Dang. Did you hear? It might take 30. <laughs> 30 seconds. Huh? It might take 30 seconds. To check your gun. I just told you 30 seconds, 60 wow. is a long time. Dang. Wow. Why? And they don't touch your gun. Because they don't train people to touch guns. So they don't touch it. They ask you to open up the gun case. The gun has to be unloaded. The magazines have to be in a uh, compartment with a cover. The bullet should not be in the magazine. It should be in a case that locks. And that case can be put in luggage that does not lock oh. or lock. Right? So the gun case. And the, what happens is you show it to the person at the ticket counter who checks your bag and they weigh it. And she give you an orange three by five card, and you sign your name on it. That's it. Damn. You, so these idiots, these idiots getting locked up for getting. <laughs> but no, because I really. So I'll be honest. Yeah, as a new gun carrier, too. I can see how you forget your gun because I, mean, I just start. As a new gun, like a person who's newly, that's not a normal thing no, every day. That I have to put re- them in their carry-ons, leaving them in the carry-on. No, know, but a lot of girls have been be ha- has been going through, and the gun, your gun might still be in your pocketbook. No, I, that's honestly, the first thing you probably think about when you get to that airport. I know, but it has to be in the case, but it has to go and check luggage. It can't go and carry. It can't go in the airport. So listen, it can't go in the airport. So what happens? So much so that you know we're at the airport. They have a sus. Authorized or don't go behind this point is authorized. If right. you made a mistake and went that way with your gun and your checked in luggage, that's a crime. Mm. Damn. You gotta go to where you're supposed to go. That's a federal offense. Yeah, yeah federal yeah. offense. Yeah. So Shit, what happens is it's such a problem that they used to in Philadelphia, they used to put a sticker on your bag to let people know that it had a gun in it. By the time you get through on the carousel, your bag be gone. You know, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. it was so bad in Philadelphia, the FBI was investigating. If you went to Terminal E, and I believe it was Terminal E, no guns ever made it out of Terminal E. Them <laughs> niggas was thieves. No guns ever made it out of Terminal E, and the FBI could never solve it. If you went to Terminal E, whatever it was, your gun never went to nowhere. Mm. It wow. didn't make it. You know, and this was a couple of years ago. It's so, never, and it had ran for years. If you went to Terminal E, it came to Terminal E, your gun never made it nowhere because them they was crafty. So give us a preview of everything that you'll be teaching at your gun course in your. In By the, the way, we're we're all going to the gun yeah. course. Yeah, but, we but, all so, going. But before that, right? Before that, mm-hmm. tell us where and how do we oh, yeah, register, how they register to get to your class to get okay class. so you can uh, email me or call me look in the camera and tell the folks <laughs> you uh, you email me at the parapet group 35 at gmail.com so it's spell it? t h e p is and peter a r a p is and peter e t is and thomas group 35 at gmail.com if you Google that, you'll also, the Parapet Group, you'll also find our website. But you can call me at 215-519-3957. We answer all calls. And that is the way you can register for the class. We're going to put all this at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. And the yeah. class will be in Jersey. We'll save the location for those who really want to pay for the class. We don't want people coming out there watching right. or think because you're not allowed. It's private range that we yeah. uh, have. And uh, the class is $250. You'll need 250 rounds. For those who need to rent a gun, contact me. We'll make those accommodations. But it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. next Saturday, December 4th. The weather's supposed to be nice. It's supposed to be 57 degrees that oh, day. Okay, so okay. say that. So say that again. You said you would need 250, need 250 rounds. Yes. Does Shop it come? Bullets. So y'all sell bullets no, too? We, no. We don't say we sell I mean, well, bullets. You know, you're you, supposed to come with 250 rounds. So the course 
That's for the fee. That includes the range fees, but it does not include your bullets. You need to bring your own bullets. Okay. If you need bullets, call us and make arrangements, and we'll make arrangements to see if we can but help you get But y'all have the weapons for them to train for with. Those who, for those who don't have a gun and they want to attend the class, they need to call, tell us what kind of caliber, and we'll make a, a weapon available for them to use at the class. Okay. There's an additional fee for that. might be 30 bucks, but that's about it. I need you some know. big shit, cuz. I'm, I'm trying. To and we all, we all, we want to take, um, we want to film us taking this class because it's it's informative and our community really needs to see and know how to obtain a, a legal weapon. Well, it's, it's something that we had talked about, I think, before we start taping. And just like we said, if you're driving a car, a car is a deadly weapon and you own that yeah. and you'll have a gun. And it's funny that they'll make you get a license and go to class for driving an automobile. But in Pennsylvania and many other states, they don't even ask you on a gun permit form, have you ever fired a mm -hmm. gun or do you even own a gun? They just well, go through the crack license. questions, the 16 questions, and then they uh, give you that and then they give you the permit. They don't know if you've right. ever so, shot. So many idiots get a gun and don't know what to do with the gun. Oh, 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 oh. Bam! And then shot somebody. And shot so, somebody. So what happens is, you know, we teach gun safety classes. Uh, I'm an NRA instructor in, I think, uh, nine or ten disciplines. Uh, I, I think I'm missing two. I'm missing an instructor in muzzle loading and reloading. Every instructor... Can, can you run down, like, some of the... Like, like it, Buck asked you, he wanted you to go down... Yeah, a couple of, a couple of the... the the Different stuff that you'd be offering at the course, at the course. For the, that'd benefit them for the 250. Okay, so what happens is we'll teach you about... So the class is good from basic to intermediate to advanced. So we'll be there with, depending on the class size, with four or five other NRA certified instructors. We also belong to NAGA, you know, the National African American Gun Association, but we're NRA instructors in several different disciplines. I think some of the instructors there are just at least five disciplines. So whether that's rifle, pistol, shotgun, range safety officer, refuse to be a victim, personal protection, inside the home, outside the home, we're certified in our instructors and all that. So we'll be taking you things from basic handling to shooting, target acquisition, and this is a gunfighter's course, right? From basic to intermediate to advanced, it's a gunfighter's course. It's an outdoor range, so it's things that you cannot do at an indoor range. At an indoor range, you have the little platform right here. You're in the stall right there. You can't shoot from your holster, and you just can shoot pop, 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 pop. Nothing moves, and you do that for 10 years, and you think you're bad. Right. You ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. You ain't nothing. Because that's that not how it happens in the street. Yeah. A gunfight is a living, dynamic, moving thing. Right. Mm. So at an outdoor range, we're moving. And you're going to see what you don't know. You, you're not even going to know what you didn't know. And then you're going to see and acquire stuff that you know you should practice on. And if you want to go better and better and better, we have classes to take you to that level, right? So we could take you from someone who never shot a gun in a few classes and keep on going. We can make you proud, Mary and John Wick. This is what we do. We train right. thousands this of people. This shit. ain't the way. We with the no, shit. No, that ain't the way. And if you come to <laughs> yeah, class like that, you'll, you'll be going home oh, real oh, quick. Oh, dog. You know what I mean? All, right. all y'all to be like that. So Tell also, you talk about me. some of the things we'll talk about. I'll tell you the first thing. Um, as far uh, as certificates and... Um, also, with the class, we'll be giving everyone a certificate for Virginia and Florida. You'll just have to get the applications, but we'll give you the certificates, which, which is needed okay. to get your Florida and Virginia permit. We'll throw that in the class. I teach that class for 175 so you're paying $250. we are throwing that in with the class. Okay. So it's a great value for the class. So you talk about you have a Pennsylvania permit. You can't go to Delaware. You can't go to Christiana Mall because Pennsylvania doesn't have reciprocity with Delaware. But, but if, if you have the Florida, Florida permit, you go from here to Disney World and carry all over the place. Right. Right? Right. Go so if I Florida, you still can't carry in Jersey. Nothing is getting you in Jersey. No, no Jersey or New York. Nothing is getting you. So, how, so, how, so how do you obtain the uh, Florida license? The Florida license, you have to discharge a firearm in front of a certified firearms instructor. And he has to give you Which is him. And then you have to, you're going to fill out the um, application. Mm -hmm. So you need a certificate from a firearms instructor. Then you're going to fill out the application, which comes with a law book on Florida laws. At the bottom of the application, you're going to swear, because there's a sworn affidavit now, that you've read the law book mm -hmm. right. before you apply for the certificate on Florida law. It doesn't right. talk about Pennsylvania law. It talks about Florida law. So every state that you're going to, you should know the laws, which you can and cannot do. 
Right. right? So what we talked about earlier before, ignorance of the law is no excuse, right? So you have to know the law. You can't say, I didn't know. You know what right. I mean? So this is the stuff that we want to teach you. And one of the things when I started teaching these classes years ago, I wanted to break us out of this. We'll say this. Yo, man, I heard you can do this because my barber told you. <laughs> <laughs> and your, bar your, your barber a lawyer now. Right? <laughs> Yo, I want to do this because my cousin is a cop. Your cousin got a damn GED. And he don't know no law in Philadelphia cop or whatever. He ain't, he ain't that bright. <laughs> he just was in good shape, and he was a punk, and he wanted to be a cop. Let me say this, because I remember one time, right? This was 2008. I got locked up for having the, because uh, the police hair didn't know the laws. So I got locked up for having my license to carry the Florida permit. Right. They take me up to Germantown or whatever. Right. I got two guns on me at this time. You my man. They mm. asked me why I got two guns. I said I got two hands. That's wow. how it's going down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they lock me up. I tell them, yeah, I'm X, Y, Z. Look, this is what it is. It, it, it. They had to go through a whole lot because they didn't even know the laws at this time in Philadelphia. Mm. So they let me go. So now I come around uh, Germantown and uh, I was in front of Morgan's, wherever that's at. So. I'm in the parking lot. Cops looks at my hip and say, damn, you, you got a gun on you? I said, yeah. I said, this came from the district. He said, oh. He said, you an officer. <laughs> no. I ain't no motherfucking officer. I'm a real nigga. But listen. <laughs> well, listen. So he says, so my man Diddy, rest in peace, he said, yeah, nigga, he got two guns on him. Like, what's up? So... He said, he said, oh, you got a license to carry? I said, yeah, I, I, I showed him the Florida joint. He said, oh, this is Florida. This don't... I said, nigga, get out of my face, man, because you don't even know the laws in your own city of Philadelphia. The police don't even know their own law. I said, man, get out of my face, man. And I walked away with two hammers on my head in front of him. No, he made a call. He made a call to 35th. He said, you just released him? He said, yeah. He said, X, Y, Z, whatever. This is... He's straight. I said, yeah, get out of my face, man. You, don't need, you need to learn your law. Wow. He was trying to bet me down. Talk he was trying to, to yeah, he was trying to. You should have bet him, too, like, he don't got nothing. He a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> no, no, no. So this is, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I, I can't front. I've learned a, a lot, lot today. today. And you gonna, you're going to learn a I lot more know. at the course. Yeah, I can't wait to go to this course. So, cuz, at the course, is 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 it going to be like before where you letting them know all the different scenarios? No. Okay. No, this is a gun class. Okay. See, if you want a gun law class or a gun right. scenario class, that will be a different class. So, before, we talked about the laws and everyone did what they did yeah. and qualified. But that's to important. Is, is, this class is a gun class. No, I know. I know right? what you You know what I mean? I so, because of the time, we're yeah. out of the outdoor range. We only, it gets dark at 4, 30, 5 right. o'clock. So, we hit last bullets fired. Got to be that time because of the neighbors. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, 10 o'clock in the morning to 4 p.m. We'll talk about some scenarios, so forth. But what happens is, talkers talk and doers do. Right. But If when, I paid someone to talk, they shut up. When can you give you know? the, are you still giving the class with the laws? Because uh, people need we, to know that. We can arrange a class. To people need the, to know that. We can arrange a class to do that, but uh, I haven't done it in a while because Florida, you know, people don't do that. It's not accepted here. But if people want that class and there's a demand for that class, I will well, gladly teach that class. It is accepted I, here. I, you got, I think if we you got to... your Philadelphia license, right? Yeah. I, see, what happens is, is this is what we're talking about. You can get a Philadelphia gun permit without owning a gun and knowing any laws. Right. Right? That's why. So yeah. what happens is once a person pays the $20 and gets his gun permit, he don't want to pay me. To, he got it. You understand? <laughs> he got it. You know how Philly do. It's not what you know. It's who yeah, you but still, that's, but for could, that's for idiots. Yeah, but you still people. But, but, but people stuff, who want the class, we will offer you, that class. Stuff you said today, and I thought I knew he some said, things about yeah. guns. I ain't no shit about guns. I did it yeah. because you guys invited me, and I'm I, honored I, to be I, here. Yeah. But this stuff, you yeah, I'm pay, being honest. Like, I, I thought so y'all got game for free. I got game for free. I thought I knew 
Yeah. Shit about guns? I don't uh-huh. know shit about guns. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then I just know how one, to shoot them. One of the most important Let's things see. that I would like to say before we leave, and I'm not saying I'm not rushing her now, but <laughs> if I put a gun here on this table, it'll sit there for 100 years and it'll never be an accident. It's on that table for 100 years. Mm-hmm. It'll never be an accident. Unless, in very rare cases, is an accident, and it's an accident, but it's by negligence, right? So the youngest person to kill a police officer in America is two years old. The oldest person to kill a cop is well in their 90s. Mm. So the person that killed the cop that was two years old was a New York City police officer, and I forget what borough he was lived in, but he came home from work, and you know when police wear their duty belts, it's hard for them sometimes to find a public restroom because they're in the stalls and their oh, guns hanging shit. on their ankles, or they leave them on the tallest, they forget them all the time, right? right? So what happens, he's rushing home and he's going to use the bathroom. And when he comes home, he gets in his apartment, he runs to the bathroom, he sees his two-year-old toddler son walking around the bed, but he throws his gun on the bed. But the toddler cannot get up on the bed. He's too small. He can't pull himself on the bed. So as the dad is in the bathroom doing his do, it clicks in his mind he left the gun on the bed. But listen, we can only Jeez. deduct that because we don't get a chance to ask him that because he gets killed. Right. So what happened as he comes out the bathroom with his stuff around his ankles, he's running out the bathroom to the bed. And the toddler's trying to get the gun. And you know they always do this with their fingers. Mm-hmm. He grabbed the gun in such a way he didn't move it, but his finger hit the trigger and the oh. bullet went right through the cop's head. Damn. Damn. Killed him. Killed his daddy. Wow. That's an accident. But when other people do accidents, it's negligence because the gun safety rules. Never point a gun unless it's in a safe direction. Finger off the trigger until ready to shoot. Know your target and beyond and all those safety rules. In order to do something like that, you have to be negligent Mm. and break so many of those fundamental rules. We'll go over that at the class. Right. At the class, we'll teach you how to draw from a holster. You should have your holster. These are the things you'll need to bring to the class. You'll have to get them. How to reload. You know what I mean? Got to have a holster? Got to have a holster. So let me ask a question. Because they've been telling me my nails got to get cut. Uh, You can learn how to shoot with them, but to take the gun class, because we'll be shooting so much, you want to take them off before you come to class next Saturday. Mm. You know? I tell you what, I'm not going to bring my personal, but... I'm going to use y'all weapons over there because I'm not... You need to bring your personal and don't be scared of Don't be scared yeah. about bringing it. We'll tell you. I feel you, like you should we'll tell you your high because it's your you gun. To, you know what I mean? That's what you're your carrying gun. every day. This is what's on your hip every day. This is right. however you carry it. You know what I mean? Right. I, I'll be using one of yours. No problem. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't want to... You know what I mean? Because I, I ain't going to... Normally, I'm not going to pull from the holster. It's going to come from the waistband somewhere. Or arm or anything. Right. You know what I mean, I've but not let nobody that's, know it's that's, be. that's a very unsafe way to carry a gun. But I mean, you you float your boat. I mean, if you're gonna be that gun food guy, I mean, carry we, that gun. Well, back in the day, we used to have the, the big puff coats, the warriors, and just have it in the sleeve because right. the coat's so big. You know, you just have a sleeve and quick draw. Blam. Right. We grown done. now. Huh? We grown, man. That's oh, it. you still gonna get it. If that's, if, means if, if that's the way you get down, that's the way you get down. So you but, saying, but in the class, you need a holster because we're shooting so much. And there are classmates next to you. We're responsible for you. So what happens when we I teach a class? I my holster away. Listen, you gotta go get one. So that's not what I'm telling you. Right. When I teach a gun class, and he's one of my instructors with me, when we teach a gun class, you, 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 you have to listen to this. I said it's 250 rounds, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we may go a little over, we may go a little less. But sometimes these gun classes, if you look at our website, our Instagram, our Facebook, there's 20, 30 people at a gun class. What does that mean? It's a lot of damn bullets. That's a lot of bullets. (laughs) That's not what it means. It means that, but that's this is what it means. If it's 250, 300 bullets, and I got 30 people, that's 9,000 chances for someone to get killed mm. in eight hours. 9,000 times. So you got to pay attention. So 
we want you to have a holster. We want you to listen. You have to pay attention. You on your phone, you're not paying attention. We're going to curse you out. You ain't going to make the class. You ain't getting no refund. Right. We need you to be on your A1 game. Right? See, you have your Has kids. Has anybody ever got injured? No. No. Thank God. No. And we, they ain't, and, they're and not we, playing. And, we, and we're prolific about teaching, and we're one of the best in the that. country by law's mercy, and no one has ever got hurt. Right. And we're going to pray the same thing that this time. But you have to listen. Mm -hmm. So when you come to class and you're talking about this, and you ain't paying attention, and you touching the gun when we say don't touch, and this, mm -hmm. that, and the other, it's none of that. You're going to lose your money, forfeit your money, kick you the hell out of class. You're going to keep a pushing. You can probably get in the next class. I don't want your money, but you're going to learn a lesson today. That hasn't really happened. You know what I mean? What has happened in all the years and the thousands and thousands of people that we have taught, we did have one person, and it was two summers ago, who came to the class. He bought a gun. He bought bullets. And he came to the class, and he says, listen, I can't do it. And he snuck out of class. He quit after about 20, 10 rounds. So he, he, says, he says he couldn't mentally ever shoot a human being. Damn. And he left. He don't need to have a gun. And I don't know if he, I think he probably got rid of his gun, but he didn't want the certificate. He didn't want to finish class. He never asked for money back. He snuck. He told some people that he came with, and this was the race. So we're like, yo, doing a head kick. Like, where the hell is he? Bro? He left. Yeah, That's the only thing that ever happened, but we've never had anyone hurt, and inshallah, we'll keep that record going, but you have to pay attention. So when we're telling you it's a certain kind of holster, so if you're drawing and putting it back, drawing and shooting, drawing and shooting, reholstering, reholstering, you need a certain kind of holster so that we can get through the class. Yeah. So it's like an immersion by fire. So it's in other words, you take a couple swimming lessons for a half hour and somebody just throw you in a deep end. You better get back here to the side of this pool. The end of this class... 250 rounds, you done shot to your hand tired, you done stood up all day, you done got some fatigue, you done paid attention, you see what you need to work on, what you can't do, it's easier than what you thought it is, you can compare yourself to other people, although you're only worried about yourself, it's an amazing event, you so, know what I'm saying? So, cuz, do you still have just the women classes, or do you just We, we do, we do both, so we have co-ed classes, and we do both. So, because of this, I'm such a punk for cold weather, this class will most likely be a co-ed class right. because I'm going for certain weather because instead of waiting for the spring. The demand was so high, but the security company was so busy, I have a 200-person waiting list for gun lessons. Mm. Mm. So you guys are bumping some people off the list. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's that. So security-wise, we're so busy, I couldn't get off. And the instructors, we couldn't get off to have the class. Right. So now it's like I'm getting threatened I want you to teach a class. I got my wife. I got my daughter. I got my son. Me and my brother are ready. Come, come, come. And it's tight. You know what I mean? Because right. of the weather, it's outdoor. Which is, which we've understand is different from shooting at a range. You know? Mm -hmm. You can never rapid fire depending on where you are. You cannot move. You're not shooting from your holster. They don't allow it. You know what I mean? These are real but you life can do it out, at your gym, right? Outdoor range. Yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. How do you carry a gun and your gun's on your hip and you shoot in your car? So, like you said, the scenario, forceful fuck, someone's going to carjack you. Well, right. you're sitting there, you got your gun pinned against the armrest, and then somebody opened up the door, you like, here, now you really can't get it out if you're right handed. Right. Right? right. But if you're left handed, you're good. Right. But if you're right handed, he pulled, you know, he opened up the door, what you going to do? You have to make space. Hmm. Right? Because it's pinned against the joint. I'm fat. It's right. up against the armrest. I got to make space. How much? If he doesn't have a gun, how much he going to kill me if he pull on me? You can't be afraid to let a nigga pull on you and you got a gun. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Like, well, 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 no, well, I, 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 I was paying attention. attention. Pull on me all I'm you want. I'm paying attention. Hey, listen, you so, choke me and pull my yeah, honey. Listen, you got to pay so attention what? to that. So what? So right. you won't catch a bad break. <laughs> so what? So for all the people that don't know what, you know, a forcible felony mean, this thing of a felony. For one, somebody raping somebody. You you see a chick getting raped next to you. I'm pointing at me. Like no, the no, no, listen, I, I pointed down. So you said, down. but you say next to you, like the person was getting raped on that L train and no one did anything. Right. So when you give these scenarios, right. like I said, you say it right. sound too strange, but that was just a couple months ago. Someone got raped Buck for said he 40 shot minutes on a train. Buck said he would have shot the dude. And that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. You, I'm preventing Absolutely. a forcible felony. Listen. Yeah. That's he needed to be shot. He needed to be shot. Like tell. He needed to be shot. You know what like I mean? Like an animal. He needed to be shot. Some people do carjacks home invasions and all this stuff. They need to get They need to get what they get. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. 
Yeah, yeah. Motherfucker picking up a, 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 a frying mm. pan, the iron skillet towards you like this, he's gone. Cook, he, he cook time. Yeah, so you, you got to cook him cook. before he cook you. The pan. This, this has been very informative for me. It has. I, 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 uh, I, hope, I hope the viewers, our viewers, enjoy this uh, episode, which I think they will because y'all really got some game for free. For free. free, yes. It but won't again. happen again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know I mean? but he got the courses, all different type of courses. Like he said, call his phone or Go hit to his the website, email, email. Don't put it uh, right on the there, screen. There have been charter schools in this city that we have taught firearm safety to. We go to the schools, we teach them firearm safeties in yeah. class, and then we've taken them to the same range in Jersey, and. It's nothing strange about them. Them parents were forward thinking. And right. they're our kids. They're from our communities, right? right. And some of them kids are grown now. Me and Cuz taught the class, right? So yeah. what happens is people look at me like, you, you taught kids to a gun? It's an Olympic sport. Shooting is an Olympic sport, at least three sports, the biathlon, pistol, and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. Then traps, it's, it's an Olympic sport. The other thing is, Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts been doing it over 100 years. They just don't want your kids learning how to do it. And, and, and when our kids learn how to do it, they learn how to do it shooting against someone they grew up with. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's an Olympic sport. Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts been doing it. But as soon as we, oh, don't do it. No, it's an Olympic sport. And this is what I'm saying. This and it's pastime, trap shootings, this, skeet shooting, and honey. Right. You know what I mean? We don't know how to hunt. So it's time for us as the black community Step up. Step to embrace... Up. These classes, it's time for us to embrace owning legal guns. Legal. Like, it's time for us to embrace guess that. what? The white, the white people shooting. take their kids shooting all Young. the time. They go hunting Young. and everything. And guess what? That's why that little boy, Cal Rittenhouse, had that yeah. uh, assault I, rifle I've never and been was ready to shoot. in my life. I've never been, been what? Hunting. Me either. We're going to plan the trip. We're all going to go. Let's get yeah, it. I'm we're going to get in the woods and yeah. go. Let's I've, get I've it. never been hunting in my life. And we're going to eat our food. We're going to eat it. Oh, this, uh, the, 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 the people are going to quarter it for us and Tyree. stuff like that. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think it's delicious. It's delicious, man. I, I ain't really well, that. I'm, I'm with it. I'm game. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, let's get it, man. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to kill B&B. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Tim, if you, you need to put the gun up in the locker and just call it a night. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would kill somebody if they try and kill me, but I don't want to kill the poor deer. Yeah, but guess what? He gonna be far you know, away. when you go hunting, sometimes, even if you don't eat the food, they quarter it, but they drop it off at food banks and so forth, so the food doesn't go to waste. Okay. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? So you just get enough to cook. No, you, I mean, you have the whole animal, but you, if you want it, they'll quarter it for you, freeze it for you and stuff like that. If you go to a hunting lodge or stuff like that, there are different ways. and oh, wow. You can have guides and stuff like that, and then you can take it to the butcher, they quarter it, you get tags for it. It's a whole thing about it. See, we talked about you having a gun permit, and you don't have to take any class or know how to shoot or anything. You can't go hunting without a hunting license. And they have hunter education courses. It costs money and you can't get in the woods. And when you mess up and violate, they take your hunting license from you. You go hunting without a license and you shoot a deer and you put it in your car. They take your truck. They take your car. Really? Man, this is real. It's real. Oh, wow. So We, we don't know anything, right? You out there hunting with no light, man. Wow. You put that deal, man. They gonna take your car. Here it is. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. You just yo, yo we ready to go hunt. <laughs> That's yeah, what I'm really no, no, you, you be in jail. You be in jail. You be in jail with wow. heavy fines. Wow. Hunting in the wood with heavy fines. That's what the game wars. So that's why. Fines. That's why it's like oh, hunting season is a thing, and everybody man. like, I gotta get my permit because I did hear a couple. And you better have a certain that. amount of orange yeah. on and yeah. so yeah. forth. You can't hunt on private lands. You gotta go to class for a couple. So of, and everybody gotta have a hunting permit to go hunt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. How much does the hunting permit cost? I forget what they cost, but you gotta take an educational course and you have to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get my shoes, uh, shooting up. Right. <laughs> so my we, we gonna drop all the info for cause. For you can holler at him so to educate better educate yourself from shooting to you got the other classes where you can learn the laws or whatever. And just so, even knowing how to. I carry think I'm gonna take them all. Yeah, I, I've learned so Pause much. With, um, I said all the class. I'm gonna take them all. That was wild. <laughs> Listen, you, you gotta be stopped, man. It's your boy King Jones eighty. It's your girl Miss Valerio. It's your boy Wiz Gam. And, and we this got been the episode of Certified Talk when we only talk certified. Yeah, this is a this is a real teaching moment. Yeah. Thank Log you. Log in and get with us. Get with cuz. Get your life together. Don't get hit out here. Be safe.
Deuces.